Statistics and Excel. Hypothesis testing T distribution one tail lower where the standard deviation of the population is known. Get ready and some coffee because if we want to get realistic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if first a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product because... The fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. You do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We'll construct this from a blank worksheet, practice our Excel tools as we build it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building, looking at a scenario similar to recent example problems, except this time we're looking at T distributions instead of normal distribution with a one tail lower situation, which we'll talk more about shortly. But the similarities are that we want to find information about a large population. We can't test every item within that large population. Therefore, strategy, take a sample and then test the sample, hoping we can apply the findings found from the sample to the characteristics of the larger population. Two techniques typically to do that, one being hypothesis testing, two confidence intervals. Confidence intervals lending themselves to situations where we don't know what that middle point is. We don't know the mean or the average. Therefore, when we take the sample, we're going to use that as, in essence, our middle point and construct in some way, shape, or form a confidence interval around it. With hypothesis testing, we're imagining that we do have an idea of what the middle point is or should be, building our graph around that hypothesis, then taking the sample to see whether or not the sample is far enough away for us to reject the original hypothesis in a similar structure as you might have in a court case where you say something is innocent until you have enough evidence to say that it's going to be guilty based on that evidence. So once we we're looking at a hypothesis testing situation here, and so we're gonna imagine that we have the middle point. In our case, we're gonna be imagining that we have a new process to do a particular type of task. And the idea of the new process is that, is it gonna take less time? Is it more of an efficient process than what we were doing before? So the idea would there would be, this is the average time we have of the process thus far. Then we're going to apply the new process and see if it's further enough away from that mean for us to say that the new process is going to be faster or more efficient. In that case, then we're looking at a one tail on the left hand side because I'm not worried so much on the right hand side to see if it's going to take more time. If it takes more time, we're not going to do the new process. We're only going to be applying the new process if it's going to be more efficient. That's why we're took, taking a look at the one tail on the lower side in this particular example. Now, there's also the question of do we use a normal distribution, bell curve, or a T distribution? Typically, we would like to use the normal distribution if we could, but we would need to know two things. The middle point, which is going to be the mead, as well as the spread or standard deviation. If we don't know what the standard deviation is, then it's likely that we might move from a T distribution 
I mean, I'm sorry, a, a normal distribution to a T distribution, which still looks like a bell curve, similar kind of thing, except it's going to have wider tails on it, which is kind of what you would expect to be the case if we have less information, because that means we're going to need a larger kind of spread of the data instead of being within two standard deviations, having 95% in the middle, for example, we would have to have more than two standard deviations on each side to get that same 95% uh, percent spread. Now, the T distributions mean that we're actually using different graphs that have different widths of tails, depending upon the degrees of freedom, which is basically depending upon the sample size. But in Excel, of course, it knows that and can pick the right graph so what we need to have an idea of is when do we use normal distribution? When do we use a T distribution? And then what are the functions that are for each of those? And then what are the characteristics of the difference? We'll actually possibly graph this example as though we used a Z or a normal distribution and possibly a T distribution so that you could see the two graphs kind of side by side and, and what the difference might be to be constructing them. And if you wanted to just visualize things you might make it easier. It might be easier to just do a normal distribution. You could still kind of analyze it in a similar type of fashion. So we'll take a look at what the difference possibly will be once we get to the graphing part of the problem. All right, the practice tab has pre-formatted cells. So you can possibly just populate within the cells with less Excel formatting, but we're gonna be doing all of the Excel formatting over here as we go if you wanna follow along from a blank worksheet. So I'm going to lay down the foundational formatting, selecting the triangle, the entire worksheet, right clicking, go to formatting. I like to start off with currency, negative numbers bracketed and red, no dollar sign, we'll add the dollar signs as needed, no decimals, we'll add the decimals as needed. Closing that up, I'm also going to make it bold. You might not need to make it bold, but I think bold makes it better for a screencast. Hi, pause. This is going to, if I spell this wrong, I apologize. Hypothesis testing. I'm just going to put like a header on it. It's going to be T distribution and it's going to be a one tail lower. That's just going to be our general lower. And you might also say the STD of the pop of the P is not known. That's taking up too much space, man. All right, whatever. It's okay. I'm going to make these two black and white. Home tab font group, we'll make that black. We'll make this white. Okay, so we're going to say the time to make, the time to do a process for process. We have a process to make something, let's say. It's kind of generic here. 15.5 is how many, we'll say, minutes it takes. So we'll say 15.5 and then the STD of the population we're going to say is not known so that's the key component which is going to tell us that we're not going to be doing uh we're not going to be doing possibly normal distributions but rather possibly be using the t distributions because we don't have that spread number uh, if we did we're more likely to be using normal distributions so company company perspective is saying does the new process take less time. That's what we want to know, because if it does, we might do the new process because we like to save time here. We're not the government. We're not some socialist country that or we just do things and we don't care how long it takes. We're like, whatever, we'll just let it roll. So, so, so we're, we're moving stuff out of the docks on the harbor with manual labor instead of automating it for like what who cares whatever we'll just do it no let's make it faster and not be let's not give in to the craziness here let's be more efficient that'll create more jobs um than than being silly anyways h sub o is going to be the null as the null hypothesis assume so we're going to assume it takes the same time. So we're going to assume the null hypothesis is like we're, we're the only reason we're testing this, by the way, which is the only reason someone might be in a court for a criminal trial. Someone thought that they might be guilty. That's why they're in the court. But we assume that they're innocent. Same thing here. 
We think the new process might be more efficient. That's why we're testing it. But we're going to make the assumption that it's not more efficient first because that's how we set up the null hypothesis and then see if we have the evidence to say that it actually is more efficient. All right, let's go in here. I'm going to make this right click and format this thing. Make it a subtext, subtext. All right, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go to here, home tab, font group, make it black and white. And then we'll make this uh, bordered and blue. All right, and then, so then we have the alternative hypothesis. Let's say H sub A, alternative hypothesis is that the conclusion if the null hypothesis is rejected, which is that the new process is faster, which is what we're kind of hoping to happen. Let's double click here. Let's make this a subtext, right clicking on it. And we're going to format the cells, make it a subtext. Okay, click and then make that a header. I might have spelled things improperly. I apologize. I'll do a spell check later. We're rolling through it here. I don't have time to mess with spelling. Let's make these orange because this is like the baseline information of our problem. This is kind of like the baseline. So I'll make that orange. That's like the given data. All right, now let's make the the in the this is now we're going to we're going to do the actual population data, which isn't known in universe, but we know about it because we're the storytellers. So we, as, re as the reader of the story, we know what the actual data is for the actual population, which we'll create now, which they don't know in universe. And therefore, they're going to have to take a sample to test it out. So let's go ahead and make a skinny C. And we're going to make our population data with a pop mean of we're going to imagine the actual pop mean that we'll use to make it is 15.5 so it is going to be the same time exact same time here we're going to imagine and we're going to say then that the stp of the pop std of the pop is going to be 4.5 let's say 4.5 and now i'm going to make a a set of population based on this information so it looks like just on this information that it doesn't our new process is not more efficient than the old process it takes the exact same amount of time uh given this on average when we make the population but again we don't know that in universe and it's not going to be exactly that because we're going to make this with a random number generation all right let's make a skinny c let's take that skinny c put that over here on the f and then let's make our pop data i'll make this black and white up top black white center and then we'll go to our data. And if you don't have the data analysis, turn it on. How do you do that? Well, look it up, man. Look it up. Try using chat GTP maybe or some kind of AI thing. They'll tell you how to do that. So we're going to go in here and we're going to say this is going to be a uh, random number generation. Okay. I'm going to say one random numbers. How many do we want? I'm just going to go with the 500, which has been my default because I think that's large enough for excel to create it but not too large normal distribution so that it'll take too long to make it and so we'll keep it at that we're going to say the mean is going to be 15.5 as we said here and the standard deviation of the population around 4.5 we would expect by the way that the process for how long it takes to make something would be normally distributed generally which means that it's more likely that we'll be okay to use it even if we have a fairly small sample size and the standard deviation of the population is not known because if we have a small sample size and the standard deviation of the population is not known we run into danger of the central limit theorem not kicking in making the mean of all of the sets uh normally bell-shaped so we would expect this to be somewhat normally distributed is the basic point here. Okay, so I'm going to say, let's go ahead and spit that out. Uh, spit that out, please. There it is. Right click. Ew, it spit. It spit on the page. Okay, it didn't actually spit it out. It just, it just, let's go to the first one. We're going to go currency, negative numbers, no dollar sign. 
And I'll keep the decimals this time. No dollar sign, but keep the decimals this time. Let's make it bold so it matches. It needs to match what I'm doing here. I'm going to make it red because that represents that they don't know about it in universe, but we know about it. So I'm going to make it red and white. This is the data we use to create it. I'm going to make it red and white because that's what we know about in universe. Or we're not in universe, but out universe. And let's make another skinny H, taking the skinny F format painting to the skinny H. Let's double check our data. Let's do a pop count. So this is going to be otherwise known as the large N, the population of the, uh, the entire population, which is just going to say count. Count all of that. Would you please Excel? It should be 500. Boom. That's what it is. Pop mean. So now we'll take the average, which should be 15.5, but it might not be exactly that because they were randomly generated. Control shift down, control backspace. There's our formula and enter 15. Let's add some decimals. 15.41, close to 15.5, but not exact because the numbers once again randomly generated around that center point. STD of the population. How many STDs we got here in this population? We're going to say this is STD of the pop and control shift down, control backspace. There it is. Enter. Boom. Adding some decimals, decimalizing to recognizing. And then so there it is. Not exactly 4.5, 4.72. OK, let's also select this data. Control shift down, control backspace and make a histogram from it just to see what the shape of the data looks like go to the insert charts make a histogram histogram there it is there's the hist so it looks somewhat bell-shaped so that's what we would kind of expect okay so that looks like even if the sample size is pretty small we should be somewhat okay if we use the t distribution even though we don't know what the standard deviation is let's make this red and white so that's going to be the behind the scenes data that we know but they don't know it in universe we know more stuff than they do they're stupid they're not stupid they just don't know they're not stupid but they just don't know stuff like we know so i'm going to say let's go to the home tab let's go to the format painter and make a skinny k over here and then let's make a sample i'm going to put a count I'm just going to say 50. We're going to make 50 of these. So one, two, we're going to take a sample of 50. I'm going to copy that down. I'm going to buckle my shoe and then drag the fill handle down once my shoe is tied. Do not go anywhere unless your shoe is tied. You fall on your face otherwise because then the shoelaces were buckled. Buckled. My shoe doesn't have a buckle. You know what I mean. Tie your shoe. Dang it. All right. So then we're going to say the data... Uh, or the sample. Now, if I wanted to take a sample of this data, I could just take the first 50 because they were randomly generated, or I could put random numbers next to it and then shuffle it like a deck of cards, or I can use the index function, which is what we'll do here. So this is going to be the index because this is the fanciest way to do it. And we like to be fancy with our pantsy having pleats in the pants. So we're going to say F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign, so that, that's, that whole range doesn't change when we move it down, comma. And then we're going to say we want a random number generation between, between the top row one, and there's 500 rows, row number five. So the bottom is one, row one, comma, row uh, 500. Give me a random number between those rows, and there you goes. Seven. Let's add some decimos. Add in some decimals, and then I'll double click the fill handle to copy it down. Double click somewhere. Does it look right? I think it does. So the sample's going to keep on changing, keep on rotating, which used to bother me, but I'm not going to let it bother me now. I kind of like it even. I've gone, it's growing on me. Home tab, font group. Let's make this black, white. Let's center it. Let's select these and go control shift down. I'm going to make it blue this time because this is what we know in universe. These are the sample tests that they have run on the new process to see if it's faster. I'm going to make it blue. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors, standard color. It's that blue right there. You don't need to make it that blue, but that's the blue that I use because it's calming, soothing, home tab, font group. And I like to be calm and soothed sometimes at least. 
I'm going to say, let's make the K over here skinny and a skinny N. All right, let's rewrite our hypothesis again, which with symbols. So, so we're going to say, all right, we want H sub O, which is the hypothesis colon is that the mean or middle point, which is often represented by insert symbol a uh, mu, which if you don't have in the favorites down here, it's in the Greek and Coptic, you can look for it, but there it is in my favorites, insert and okay. And then I go off of it and back into it because sometimes when I add something and then I keep typing, it does weird stuff. So I'm gonna go back into it and then right click and format that little thing to make it a subscript. So that, so now it's fancy looking. All right, so we're gonna say that's gonna be greater than or equal to enter so that it doesn't think I'm doing a formula. Greater than or equal to, we're imagining this 15.5. So that's gonna be the 15.5 is the, the old time. We have a new process so we're going to say our null hypothesis is that the process is taking the same time as the old process. Now the new process, the data is actually at 15.41, which is a little lower than over here, even though we generated the data using that same 15.5. So, but we don't know that yet. So that's going to be, that's what we're going to assume. And then we're going to say, okay, well, what's the hype, the alternative H sub A colon of mu by going to the insert symbol mu, insert, close it, go off the cell back on it. So I could take that A, right click and make it a subscript. Man, that's a fancy, that's a lot to do that fancy. And this is gonna be less than. So less than, uh, this is gonna be equal to the same number. Let's add some decimals on this number. Home tab, decimalize to recognize. So. We're gonna say, so we actually want it, of course, once again, to be less than 15.5 minutes, let's say, or whatever, right? Because we want the new process to be faster if we're going to adopt it. But we're gonna make the assumption then that it's not faster, that it takes equivalent or more time, in which case we would not adopt the new process. We would keep the old process, you would think, unless there's some other reason other than just the speed of the process to adopt the new one. All right, let's make this black. Let's make this bordered and blue. And then let's run some numbers on it, shall we? We're going to run numbers all over it. We're going to say format paint R is a skinny. All right, so what's the N, which is going to be the sample size? N is the sample size. We'll just do a count. We know there's 50. We, we did 50 tests of the new process equals count tab of the samples. Control shift down, control backspace. There's the formula, enter. We also need to know the DF, which I'm going to call it, which is the degrees of freedom. We don't need the degrees of freedom if it was the normal distribution, but we're using T distributions, the degrees of freedom telling us which T distribution graph we're going to use, which Excel will pick automatically if we tell it the degrees of freedom. So it's going to be equal to the sample size minus the number of samples, which we only did one sample of 50. So that's going to give us 49. And then X bar is going to equal the sample mean. So remember, we have the mean of the population, which is not known, the mean of the samples, which is what we're going to use. And we can imagine the mean of every possible combination of means of samples of sample size, in our case, 50, which should all tend towards the same number, the middle point of the population mean. So this is going to be the average tab of the sample, control shift down, control backspace. There's our number, our numero, our formula at least. Let's add some decimals, decimalizing to recognizing. And then we're gonna say alpha, A is gonna be our alpha. And that's gonna be alpha. That's gonna be that alien guy that's in that movie, Alf. No, that's not Alf, alpha, alpha. It's going to be the, the 
the level of like confidence that we're going to have, we're going to set it at 5%. Now, remember that if I go over here to our graph, we're saying this little orange bit is the 5%. So if our, our result is over here somewhere, then we're going to have an area less than the 5%. Now that 5%, you might think like, if you're thinking of like a two tailed test, you would imagine you'd have two equivalent tails on each side, which would be equal to 5%, in which case you'd have two standard deviations in the middle or two standard deviations away would give you like 95% of the data in the middle. But in this case, that whole 5% is all on one side because it's only a one tail test on the left. And even if it was a two tailed test, we wouldn't possibly have 95% of the data within two standard deviations because we're not using normal distributions, but rather T distributions, in which case the, the, you'd have to have a little bit greater than two standard deviations to encompass the 95% because the T distributions have fatter tails than the normal distribution. Okay, let's go back on over. <clears throat> we're going to say then this is going to be the SE which is going to be the standard standard error. So the standard error uh, calculation is going to be our formula. I think I have my formula over here. Let's copy it and put it in our worksheet. So here's our formula. Copy that. Copy that. Roger. Roger. And so our formula, we're going to drop the second bit like we normally do. And remember when we talk about the standard deviation, we have the standard deviation of the population, which is not known uh, tip here. And then we have the standard deviation of the sample, which might tend towards the standard deviation of the population, but is not what we're using to construct the graph because to construct the graph, we're using the standard deviation as though we're taking all possible, the mean of all possible combinations of sample of sample size 50, which is approximating the standard deviation with this formula, which is the standard deviation would be of the population, but we don't know that, therefore have to substitute the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n, which is the sample size. Okay, makes perfect sense. So we're gonna say this is gonna be equal to the standard deviation of uh, the sample, which have I calculated that? Where, where, where is the standard? Let me calculate that first. Let's pull this down here. Get ahead of, you're getting ahead of yourself, man. This is going to be the STD standard deviation of the sample. It's going to be equal to the STD dot S standard. How many, how many STDs does this sample have? Control shift down, control backspace, and boom, desnormalize to recognize. All right, so that's five. It's close to the standard deviation of the population, 4.72. The standard error, though, which is the standard deviation we're going to use to make the graph, is going to be equal to the standard deviation of the sample because we don't know the standard deviation of the, high, of the population in our hypothesis example, even though we know it as the creator here. We don't know it in-universe. All right, divided by the square root of uh, the sample size, 50. Close it up, enter, boom. Decimalize to recognize. Let's bring it out a bit. So it's gonna be substantially smaller, of course, than the standard deviation of the population or of the sample. Okay, so then, then we can do the T, which is gonna be the test statistic, which is gonna be calculated at the same way as the Z uh, if it was using a normal distribution. So remember the idea here is we're saying, okay, this is this is the middle point based on based on the hypothesis. And then we came up with our number, which is going to be different than the middle point, which we can measure in X is, which in our case is in minutes, but we can also measure it in standard deviations, which would normally be what we call Z scores. And but because we're using T distributions, they're going to be T scores instead of Z scores, but it's the same basic principle or idea. Okay, so how do we calculate it then? We could say it's just simply going to be equal to, let's say, uh, put our brackets, and this is going to be our point. That's the middle point we came up with, minus what 
the middle point is for our hypothesis. And then we're going to divide that by the standard deviation, which in our case is going to be the standard error, because that's the standard deviation we use to make the bell curve. And then we're going to decimalize to recognize. So it's basically, it's basically 0.697 standard deviation in terms of standard deviations away from like the middle point, but we're looking at T's instead of Z's in our case. All right, so then let's see if we can calculate the uh, the P, P value, the P value in terms of a T for the, for the T because we're looking at the T's and that's going to be equal to, so the P value is going to be imagining this side, this orange bit, the area under the curve, right? So we're going to say this is going to be equal to t dot dist tab and we're looking for uh the x which is going to be this t which is a little confusing comma degrees of freedom which is not the sample size but the degrees of freedom sample size minus the number of samples which in our case was one comma cumulative in this case we want it to be cumulative and therefore we're going to put a one instead of a zero close it up and enter and let's decimalize to recognize. All right, just for the heck of it, let's also do the p value. Uh, the p value, if it was a z that we were doing, everything would basically be the same. But now we'd say this is going to be the norm dot s dot dist tab of the z, which would be this. We test statistic would be a z in that case, comma. And do we want it to be cumulative? Yes, therefore one instead of zero and close it up. Let's decimalize to recognize. And so notice it's slight, we have a slightly different because again, the T distribution has a fatter tail, which we might analyze in more detail, hopefully once we get to the actual graphs. All right, let's now calculate the critical value. Critical value. And, and again, we can do it with the T's and then uh, the Z's. So now we're looking at this point that we would have to, that's the critical value in terms of Z's or T's instead of in terms of minutes that we would have to pass uh, in order for, t for us to determine that we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So this is gonna be equal to, it's gonna be the T dot inverse tab of uh, the probability, which is gonna be that 0.05 comma degrees of freedom, which is the sample size to minus the number of samples, which in our case is 50 minus one or 49 and enter decimalize to recognize. Boom, 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 boom. Let's bring it out to around there or let's go back to here and let's do another one. So now we're going to do critical value again, critical value, but this time with the Z and this is going to be equal to norm dot s dot inverse tab of just the probability, which is the 0.05, boom, decimalize to recognize. And then so slightly different numbers there once again. Okay, so now let's let's do our little calculation here and say, okay, in p values, if this number is less than uh, than the 0.05 that's when we would reject the null hypothesis. And you can see it's, it's greater than the 0.05 here. So we don't have the evidence uh, to reject it. So we're gonna say, how can we do that with like a little logic test formula? We're gonna say, okay, this is gonna be equal to, and let's say, we're gonna say if tab, if this number is less than uh, this number, then comma, what do you wanna do? We would say then, reject quotes comma what do you want to do if that's not the case we're going to say then no reject reject and so in this case notice it keeps changing right because i'm i'm shuffling the data around because the numbers are changing so so now we have a, a no reject here because this number uh, 0.2 is greater than the 0.5 meaning the area of this bit, we're imagining if that's 5%, the area, and I had something over here 
then the area of, of my bit over this bit would be less than the area of this bit, that orange bit. And that's why we would reject it. Or we can say, hey, look, here's the critical value in T or Z values. And if I'm lower than that value on the negative side, then we would have the evidence to reject. So I can think about it this way. We can say equals if uh, tab, if this number is, uh, that's the critic, let's do it. I like to do it this way. If this number is less than this number, then what do you want us to do? Then we would reject, reject, quote. But if not, comma, then quote, no, reject, end quote, enter. So now it's not rejecting because, because this T statistic measuring our average is not far enough away from the middle point, doesn't pass that critical value and therefore we don't have the evidence to reject it, which is what you would expect given the fact that our actual data here has a mean around 15.41, which is pretty close to the average of our current processing time that we're, that we're using. And therefore we don't have enough evidence to say that it's fast enough for us to reject the null hypothesis indicating that we have the evidence that it's significantly faster. All right, let's go ahead and make this blue and bordered let's make this whole thing blue and bordered blue and bordered and let's make this blue and bordered okay so now i'm going to graph this out and i'm going to try to graph it two different ways we'll do it with the with the z distributions which isn't what we're practicing here and then and the t district let's do the t distributions first since that's what we're on here so i'm going to say let's make a skinny format pane. I'm going to do this fairly quick because we're running long here. And let's say that we say this is going to be the Z or this is going to be the T. And then based on uh, the T, we can then calculate the P of, well, we can, based on the T, we can calculate the X and then the P of X. And let's start with that. So I'm going to say negative four and then negative three point nine nine select those two decimalize why am i choosing those numbers because i'm trying to say the graph in terms of z's i want the x to be large enough to encompass all the data and even with the wider tails of a t distribution four standard deviations should be enough to encompass all the data so i'm just going to select those and copy them down until i get to a positive four so going down to do, 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 I should I should use a sequence function, but I still feel like this is pretty fast. So then I'm going to say, OK, if that's the X, I mean, if that's the T, then what is the X? The X is going to be if that's in T values, it's going to be then the standard uh, the, the, the standard error, which is the, the, the measure of the spread times four of them, negative four. And so now I have a negative number plus the middle point, which which we're going to say the middle point of the graph is the hypothesized 15.4. And so that would be our data. Let's add some decimals and then double click to copy it down. Uh, hold on. Something something ain't right here. Let's undo that. Double click on it. Kpaso. I, this number needs to be absolute. So these two numbers to be absolute. So the only one is not absolute is the one in column W. Therefore, this one, F4, dollar sign before the T and the six, this one, F4, dollar sign before the Q and the one, enter back on it, double click to copy it down. That looks better. All right, and then we're gonna say this equals the T dot dist. Little confusing that we're taking the T and not the X here. We're taking the T comma degrees of freedom going to be 49, 50 minus one. And then we're going to say F4 because I want to copy that down, comma, cumulative. No, this time, therefore zero instead of one. Close it up. Let's percentify to recognize, add some decimals, double click to copy that, that one down. All right, let's graph this thing out and see what we have thus far. I'm going to make this black and white and border, black, white, centered and let's take our data control shift down control backspace and then insert charts 
We're going to make more charts. I'm going to make all charts. We're going to go to the area graph, choosing the area. Boom. Shock a lock. Uh. And then I'll get rid of the title. And then let's see what else. What else could we do to this thing? I want to add the X proper X data. I'll say change that. I'm going to change it to the X's. Control shift down, control backspace. It's not showing up. I'm gonna select this, boom, and then boom. There it is, it showed up. Good, it's nice of you to show up for crying out loud. And then I also wanna add uh, the, the T's. So I need another set of data to do that. So I, I wanna add another set of data that, that is going to be the, the lower bit, meaning everything that's beyond this critical value right here. So I'm gonna make this gonna be, this is gonna be then uh, uh, this is going to be equal to uh, T is has to be less than this critical value and enter. So it doesn't like that because if I double click on it, it needs a quote around the T quote, make it a small T end quote, and then an and that should make it a uh, oh, wait a sec. No quote around the T and around this and then and okay but now it's got decimals so I'm going to double click on it again and round it round to let's say two decimals there we go that looks much nicer I like that it's not all messy all right so then we're going to say this is going to be equal to if tab this t is less than that value right there the critical value f4 to make it absolute then what do we want you to do i want you to give me the p of x the percent comma if not i want you to leave it blank space i'll just put a space just put a space in there that's what i want you to do okay and then let's say let's go percent add some decimals and then double click it down so there it is but then it stops and gives you a blank space once you get past that okay that looks right all right let's add it and see if it looks right on the graph that's where the real test happens let's go to the selecting data and add data this is going to be the name i'm going to say this is going to be the range the name and the range is going to be okay it's not showing up yet so i go dude dude there it's showing up okay okay and boom so there's our little tail let's double click on it i'm going to add a secondary axis to it so i can add the t's on the bottom get rid of this i don't want you to do that excel how many times i got to tell you how many times oh god i'm going to go to the data and then second set of data and edit it. And then this is what I want, okay? I want you to add the T's. That's what I want you to do. And then we're gonna click here and say, there it is, okay. You shouldn't be talking to the AI like that. They're gonna get pissed at some point. AI needs to, AI needs to do what I tell it to do. That's what that AI needs. This is gonna be the ax, don't tell me, don't, tell me how I should talk to my AI. We want a secondary axis. And then we're going to say more options. And I want this one to be on the bottom. Why did you put it on the top? Excel? Dang it. I like it on the bottom. Move it to the bottom now. Okay, there we go. Alright, so if we look at that, and now I'm going to add a little line here and say okay let's check oh what is that that's not what i wanted to do let's say insert this line let's try that i'm going to say okay so what is this telling me the middle point i can measure in x's or in t's in t's it's at zero it should be that middle point and then in x's it's at the 15.5 because i made it around the hypothesis so around 15.5. And then the critical value over here is at the 1.67.
1.67 somewhere over here in terms of the t's and that gives me about 14.42 if i was to look at the equivalent x value on that range and then we came up with 16.83 16.83 which is like it's on this side so it's nowhere near in this case at this point because it's going to keep on changing as I keep on double clicking on the data, but it's nowhere near over here. So clearly we couldn't reject uh, the, the information based on what we have thus far. Okay, so let's go ahead and select this whole thing. Control shift down. Let's make it, I think it looks, I think it looks good. Let's, let's do the same thing as though we were doing it as a normal distribution, just so we get an idea of the difference here. So now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Let's select this same data and put it over here on this side. Or actually, let's just move the graph over. And I'm gonna get rid of this. All right, make up your mind. You're confusing people. Okay, I didn't really think about this before. I think I, I mean, I did think about it, but like, I, I think I can arrange it better than I had thought about before, because I have a, I think I can do it better now. So let's do the same thing. I'm gonna say this is gonna be uh, the same thing, this is going to be equal the same stuff here. Can I say add in double click? Well, let me do that. No, I'm going to just copy that down. All the way down to there. Boom. All right, that's the same. And then, but then I'm going to say the X. The X is once again going to be, so now this is not T's, this is in Z's now because we're imagining we have the normal distribution, which just means that it doesn't have its fat of the tails. So now we have four times, same thing, four times the standard, which is that F4 in the keyboard. And then we're gonna say that times that, uh, uh, plus the middle point, which is the 15.5, same thing. Da, da, adding some decimals, double clicking it down. X is, oh, wait a sec. Wait a second here. Something ain't right here. Hold on now. Undo, undo, double click. We're gonna A, B, this one. I gotta say F4 on that one. And then copy it down. It should be the same. So it should be the same. All right, and then the P of X, here's where, the, here's where it, it differs. So this is gonna be equal to now norm.dist. This time I pick up the X comma, the mean, which is, is this mean, because that's the mean of the graph, not the one of the sample. And then F4 on the keyboard, because that, that needs to be absolute. And then comma, the standard deviation is gonna be the standard error, not the standard deviation of the population of the sample, but rather the speed down and my mouse is freezing, something's happening. My computer's like, there's too much. And then comma, and then we're gonna say, this needs to be uh, uh, zero, not cumulative, close it up, enter, format, percent, decimalize, copy it down. Okay, and then now I'm gonna say, this is gonna be the Z needs to be, less than the Z number, which is slightly different because of the different tail shape of the graph. So that means that this one is gonna be equal to if tab this Z is less than this critical value for the Z score, which is slightly different now, then I want you to give me this P of X, but if not, then give me a space, boom, and I need to make everything that's not in here absolute, which is just the one in T, taking that one F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute, enter, and then decimalize, adding some percent, copy it down. Okay, so now let's just make our comparative graph so that we can look at these two and look at the slight differences between the T graph. Let's add a title here. So I could say this is gonna be uh, 
a title. I just want a, not an axis title, like a normal, like a title title. Oh, oh, chart title. There it is. What are you blind? Kind of. Little, a little, just a little bit. All right. So then let's do. So then this one, I'm going to say Control Shift Down, Control Backspace, and we'll put it right here. Insert, and we're going to make this one another graph, charts, area, and this one. Okay. And then this one's going to be a Z. So there we have that. And then I need to change the bottom bit. So I'm going to go boom and change this to be the, the X's control shift down, control backspace. It's not showing up. So I say, boom, boom, there it is. Okay. Okay. So there it is. And then I'm going to add the, the tail. So I'm going to say data is going to be add this one and then delete that and put this in there control shift down control backspace it's not showing up yet so i say click click there it is okay okay so there it is double clicking on its secondary axis closing it up didn't don't want you to do that don't put that over there i told you i told you once i told you a thousand times and you do it again and again every time all right it's okay i don't know why you have to do that every time. Okay. Okay. Now what happened? Now I got frustrated and I'm going to un un undo that. Wait a second. I'm going to say add data and I'm going to go to the second bit, edit, and then I'll choose this bit here. Wait, I already did that. No, it's doing, it's doing it right now. So no, I'm on the wrong graph. Okay. I'm totally whacked out. Okay second one edit this needs to be the z's control shift down control backspace click in here and here okay okay so now it's not showing up until i go here and then axis secondary horizontal uh there it is secondary horizontal no, it's okay. It's getting a little wonky here. We're going to say, I want you to put it on the bottom, put it on the bottom. All right. I think I have it. I think I have done it. I have done it. All right. So now we could see the difference between these two at this critical value point on the T distribution. We're at the, uh, it, that should be at the 1.68, right? So it's like it's like uh, the 1.68, whereas on the Z, it's the 1.64, which is you know pretty close because you can see that we have a fairly large sample size, which is 50, which means that the two graphs are converging more closely as the sample size gets larger. So we don't have a big difference between the two. So I wanted to put them kind of side by side, and you can kind of you can. You can see what's happening with the axes here, right? When I take, I can look at it at in X's or in minutes, and I have the same labels down here, whether you think about these as, as T's or whether we have them as Z's. But then when we actually graph the graph, this normal distribution is going to be a little bit thinner on the tails than we have over here. What does that mean? That means the area of the, the, the t distribution here this orange part is going to be a little bit larger the area under the curve than under here which which you could see with the the p value calculations right the the t has a larger area than 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 the p value for the z and it means that this this critical value here is going to be is going to be slightly different as well. So you can see here on the on the T, we have a, a critical value that's going to be a little bit further out than we would need with uh, the Z. Because again, 
of the fatterness of the tail of the T distribution than the Z. So that's not something you would normal that you might not, you kind of overlook it when you do it in Excel because uh, you just make the same graph and they look like exactly the same. Whereas if you did this like in a book, you'd have to actually pick the proper graph from a from a list of graphs based on the the degrees of freedom, which Excel is just kind of doing like automatically here. Uh, so in any case, and also just means that you can kind of use the normal distribution graph to kind of graph it and get an idea of of what you're doing and then alter, you know, the idea. So you can still use the picture will give you a general idea of what's happening. It's just that then your 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 numbers will change a little bit based on the on the T value and the P's because of the wideness of the tail. OK, in any case, let's go ahead and make this blue and bordered. I'm getting tired. I'm going to say blue and bordered and call that good. It's good. 